Father, we thank you for tonight. We bless your name because of your goodness and bringing us to this place. We thank you because we are gathered here around the word of God. And we, and we know that even though the world is changing, the Bible remains the same. And we are praying that your word will enrich our lives as we come to this retreat in Jesus' name. We pray that all hindrances and disturbances will be taken out of the way. And you will bless every one of us in Jesus' name. We pray, Lord, that none of us will allow the temporal things or physical things to hinder us from getting rid, to getting the things you are teaching us in your word. Bless us as we continue. In Jesus' name we pray. Let's all be seated, please. I'm starting with a message God's Word. In a changing world. There are two things you need to notice there. One, the word. And two, the world. One, the world is changing. Two, the word of God is unchanging. One, the world in which you are will pass away. Two, the word of God will never pass away. It is very good for us to know that the world is changing. And you need to understand you cannot build anything solid on whatever is changing. All the things you see in the world today, they are changing gradually. The customs are changing. All the people in the world are changing. Governments are changing as well. The conditions of living are changing. Moral values and standards are changing. We're told in First John chapter two and verse seventeen. And the world passes away, and the lost thereof. But he that doeth the will of God abideth forever. It says the world is passing away. All the things you can see in the world, they are changing and passing away. Everything you see in the world today is not exactly as it was many years ago. He also says the lost thereof, they are also changing and passing away. The many things you will observe in the world, like the customs of the world. The ideas and ideologies of the world. And all the things that people do appreciate in the world. There is a constant change, there is a constant evolution coming upon them. Even the forms of government in every nation. 
Koda ise to ni oniru ru ijoba ni gbogbo awon orilede. Everything is changing from time to time. O n gbogbo lo yi pada lati igbadegba. If you see the conditions in which we are living today. Bi a ba wa ri ku ti a wa ti a ngbe loni. The interaction between people within the nation. Ifi kon lu kon to wa laarin awon eniyan ninu orilede. And all the things you can see in life all around you. Ati o n gbogbo ti a le ri ni aye to yi wa pa. You will see there is nothing that is stable and the moral values of course are changing what people thought was right in those days many people say they are not no more right today and you, and you know that since the world is changing like that you cannot build your life on what is changing you cannot build a solid house on the ground that is not stable sometimes in the in many parts of the world you have some shaking of the ground and it is difficult to build great edifice on such places that are shaking and your own life is like that solid building if you are going to build your life somewhere you cannot build your life on what is constantly changing there are many young people that look all around them and the customs fascinate them the ideas they get from the radio from the television they fascinate them what they read in novels and magazines will fascinate them what they look at in the film shows of the cinema houses fascinate them and they try to build their lives on all these things they can see and feel and touch. What they do not understand is that all these things they are looking at in the world, they are constantly changing. And because they are constantly changing, you cannot build your life upon them. You cannot follow the examples of the people of the world because they do not remain stable in one location. You see in 2 Timothy chapter 3, verse 13, it says, But evil men and seducers shall wax worse and worse deceiving and being deceived. In the English Bible, when it says they go worse and worse, that means they are changing all the time. They were bad before. They are worse today. They will be worse tomorrow. Which means that they are going from bad to worse. They are changing all the time. 
eyi ti o tumo si wipe lati inu buburu se ni won te si waju lo sinu bibugiri ni gbogbo ojo and you cannot build eternal things on things that are shifting and changing a ko si le ko ohun ti aye raye sori ohun ti o je wipe o wa yi pada ni gbogbo igba in second timothy chapter 4 verses 3 and 4 ni timothy ukeji ni ori ikerin ni ese iketa ati ese ikerin for the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. But after their own law shall they heap to themselves teachers having itching ears. And they shall turn away their ears from the truth and shall be turned unto fables. All that the word of God is telling you there is that people are changing. Not only that people are changing, churches are changing. Big denominations are changing. There were denominations years ago that will stand on the top totality of the word of God. It's no more so. There are people before in days gone by, they will plant their lives on the word of God alone. It is no more so. There were churches years gone by that will depend on the word ye must be born again. It's no more so. There were churches in the past that will walk according to sound doctrine. It's no more so. Which means it is not just that the world is changing, the denominations and churches are changing. It says the time will come when they will not endure sound doctrine. And you cannot build your life on the examples of the churches that will not stand on sound doctrine. You see, there are many people that come to a church like this. And when they hear about sound doctrine of the word of God, they begin to point to all the churches. And they say, after all, that other church is not like this. Yes, it's because they have changed. It is because they are not standing firm on the word of God. Here the apostle says the time will come. And the time has now come. When churches and denominations and ministries will not stand upon sound doctrine. And after their own lusts and immoral desires, they will go and import teachers for themselves. Families are changing. It is families that make up the world. If the families do not change, the world will not change. This is why you cannot look at the example of another family and say, after all, they do so and so in another family. Those families are changing with the world.
Friends are changing. Friends are changing. There were friends you had many years ago that will tell you, let us obey the Bible. Let us follow the word of God. Those friends today, they tell you, well, they cannot stay by the word of God alone. Those friends are part of the world that is changing. Desires of people are changing. Obviously, when a lot of you here were young, you had some desires in your heart. But today, now those desires have changed. Maybe what you wanted years ago, you don't want them today. Interests and attitudes are changing. Your own world around you is changing. And this is the reason why you cannot build your life on all the things that are changing and shifting all around you. Our spiritual lives cannot be built on the changing standards of society. If you build on all these changing things around you, it's like you are building on the sand. Young people look away from all the other young people around you. Look at the word of God. Families, come back to the word of God. It is the word of God that is unchanging. In Matthew chapter 7 from verse 26. And everyone that heareth these sayings of mine and doeth them not shall be likened unto a foolish man which built his house upon the sand. Jesus had given real serious message of the kingdom of God. And then he said, everyone that hears and he doesn't do the word of God. Everyone, anyone. In the world, there are people that make differences between who you give instructions to. There are some churches, you cannot talk to some people in that church, you can only talk to the little children to attend Sunday school. But Jesus expects that everyone that wants to get to the kingdom of God, young or old, will listen to the word of God and obey the word of God. Everyone that heareth these sayings of mine. Friends here tonight, you will hear a lot of Jesus Christ all through this time you will be here. We'll open the word of God to you on every area of your life. We will challenge you with the commandments of the Bible when as you are here this week. We will give you teaching 
giving an instruction according to the word of God while you are here this week. You will be reminded of things you had heard before, but maybe you are forgetting them. You will hear things perhaps you are hearing for the first time. Candidates for heaven, pilgrims on the way to heaven, they do not disagree with the word of God. After hearing the word of God, a person that wants to please God will not be denying the word of God and arguing against the word of God. We do not compare the word of God with the changing ideologies of the world. When Jesus gave the word to the people, it was a final authority from heaven. Jesus didn't say anyone that has a different opinion, you can tell us your opinion. He said, I've given you the mind of God. Anyone that doesn't do it is building his house on the sand. All through this week, we'll be giving you the very mind of God. And it is not something you can bargain with. Well, if I don't do that, do I have an alternative? Jesus knew that there were Pharisees and Sadducees listening to him. The people that felt they knew everything they will ever know. They said there was no other thing to be taught. No other thing to learn. And they were present while Jesus was teaching the people. He knew them. And he said, Every one of those Pharisees and scribes that hear these words of mine and will not do them is building a spiritual house on the sand. He knew there was Sadducees there that did not believe in spiritual supernatural things. He did not sit with them on a democratic table to say, well, let's all agree together, let us vote whether we are going to agree with this word or not. The doctrines of the Bible are not discussed in a democratic way. The word of God is final. The doctrines of the Bible are final. For any candidate who wants to make heaven, the word of God is not something we argue against. Everyone that heareth these saints of mine and doeth them not. 
Jesus knew that there were educated people in his audience. They had read ancient history and contemporary history. And, and they are likely to begin to use their brain to gauge the word of God. And Jesus said, you cannot put the word of God on one side of the scale and your ancient history on the other side of the scale. He said, everyone, educated historian, that hears the word of God and does not do it, is building his life upon the sand. Well, he knew that there will be literates there too. Illiterates that will say, well, I don't want to hear anything that they are preaching. All I want to do is that I want them to pray for me. He knew there were illiterates there that will say, well, hearing the word of God, obeying the word of God is not what I want. How will I eat? How will they heal me? How will they solve my problem? How will they provide this for me? He knew they were there. I want him also we could be bar or lawn what if we burn us in one in your pony te means won't to Jamilogu only we pay ba one in one say down ba one in one say bad dura for me ba one in wala me your cell and Jesus said every illiterate man or woman that hears these words of mine and he doesn't do them, he'll be building his house upon the sand. There are sick people that think they don't need the word of God. The idea they have is that, look, I am blind, and as I am blind, my sins are not terrible before God. If I die, God will pity me because I'm a blind man. I will get to heaven. Other people will say, look at me, I am lame. God cannot be so serious about my sin. He knows my condition. And since I'm a lame man, he may keep malice and get angry and fight and steal and commit a lot of atrocities, but he will say, Well, God knows that I'm a lame man. But Jesus said, Everyone that heard these sayings of mine and doest them not shall be likened unto a foolish man that which built his house upon the sand. And it says the rain descended and the floods came and the wind blew and beat upon that house and it fell and great was the fall of it. 
o jo si ro ikun omi si de afefe si fe won si bi ilu ile na o si wo iwo re si pojojo what i've been telling you is that the world around us is changing o n ti mo tin so fun yin ni wipe aye ti o yi wa ka o yi pada and you must build your life on what remains unchanged ni won si gbodo wa ko aye re lori ohun won ni ti o duro ti ko yi pada won you know that god remains the same for In Malachi chapter three verse six, God tells us very plainly and clearly. For I am the Lord, I change not. I am the Lord, I change not. Can I just impress this upon your heart, friends? That God remains unchanging. From the beginning of time, He punished sin. God remains unchanging. From the beginning of time, God demanded we should live holy lives and God remains unchanged. And because he does not change, his word does not change. The words of men change because men are changing. But the word of God remains unchanged. Because God remains the same forever. In Deuteronomy chapter 4 verse 1. Now therefore I can owe Israel unto the statutes and unto the judgments which I teach you to do them. Genesis and Israel, Petisila, Ati, Dajo, to do them when you, as you come here this week you are not just to appreciate the word of God you are to do and practice and observe the word of God in verse 2 ye shall not add unto the word which I command you Neither shall you diminish aught from it. That ye may keep the commandments of the Lord your God which I command you. There are multitudes of people in many churches that are not willing to keep the commandments of God. Do you know why people change their doctrines? Because they are not willing to obey the word of God. When they hear the word of God concerning scriptural marriage. And they are not willing to do it. They ask for a change of the doctrine. When they hear the word of God on Christian appearance and dressing. And they're not willing to do it. They demand for a change. When they hear the word of God concerning sanctification and holiness. And they're not willing to do it. They demand for a change. But here God said, Thou shalt not add unto the word of God. And thou shalt not subtract or diminish from it. This week you'll be hearing the word of God explained to you step by step. And the Lord is already telling us that he is not our equal. He is not our subordinate. 
subordinate either. Subordinate means somebody lower than we are. Now it is somebody who is subordinate to you that you can change his world. Or it is somebody who is your equal that you can say, well, friend, why don't we do that thing like this? But you see, my friend, however educated you are, God is still not your subordinate or your equal. No matter how rich you are, God is not your equal. God is not your subordinate. And no matter how experienced in the world you are, you have gone left, you have gone right, you have gone a lot of places. Still, God is not your equal. No matter matter you might be a theologian you have, you have gone to seminary you're going to seminary doesn't make god your equal and it doesn't make god your subordinate you might even be an exalted man or woman in the world but you are not as high as the mountain yet. Yet God is not your equal, is not your subordinate. My friend is your subordinate that you can change his word and say, well, you are lower than I am, go and change that thing you are talking about. There is nobody here that can change the word of God. There is nobody here that can add to the word of God. Nobody here that can subtract or diminish from the word of God. Ye shall not add to the word which I command you. The downfall of many people is the attempt to subtract from the word of God. The downfall of many churches and denominations is to subtract from the word of God. But friends, as you come to this retreat, you bend the knee before Jesus. You bow before the Almighty God. Look up to the hills from uh, to God. And you say, God, I accept you are not my equal. God, I accept you are not my subordinate. And I do not have the ability or the intelligence or the responsibility or the opportunity of changing the word of the Almighty God. God told the children of Israel He said ye shall not add to the word which I command you What he meant is this Whether at the time of Moses or at the time of Joshua Or at the time of David or the time of Daniel Any time until they come to see face to face they must not add to the word of God. Oh, some people say, you see, at the beginning of the ministry, this is what we believe. But now years have gone. And 
And we need to modify and change a little. But God told the children of Israel. And he said even after Moses had left them. They could not add or subtract from the word of God. Other people will say when I came to this church. I was only a standard six older. Only at school search. But he will say, you know, now I'm a graduate. My friend, whether you are school search or graduate any time of your life, you must not add to the word of God. Other people will say when I came to the church I was single, I wasn't married, but now I'm married. And but God was telling them single or married you have children or you don't have children anytime any period of your life at the time of prosperity or at the time of famine at the time of difficulty or at the time of trial at the time when friends surround you at the time when friends forsake you at the time when you are happy at the time when you are sad ye shall not add to the word which I command you neither shall ye diminish aught from it which means there is no little part you can add or subtract from the word of God he said you must keep and abide by the word of God a lot of people have had accidents on their way to heaven they cause of their accident is trying to take away from the word of God they try to get baptized in the Holy Ghost without getting sanctified they try to get married without knowing the will of God they try to run ahead of God without observing the word of God they say this is the reason many people have had accidents on the way. But the Lord is saying, Ye shall not add to the word of God. Friends, you know what God meant? That commandment was meant for everybody. That Moses had no liberty to add or subtract from the word of God. Aaron the high priest had no liberty or chance to add or subtract to the word of God. The sons of Aaron and the Levites had no opportunity to add or subtract. How many people have deceived themselves and they say, Well, I am bishop now. I can and add to the word of God I can surprise. How many people have said I am pastor, I am coordinator, I can add, I can subtract from the word of God. How many people have said I am pastor, I am coordinator, I can add, I can subtract from the 
wipe o ni sensin yi o lu so agbosan ni mi emi gan la la boju to ni tori na mo le si afikun mo si le yo kuro ninu what remains unchanging sugbon ro si olorun o duro lai yi pada and that you are planning your marriage doesn't change the word of god be si ni daju daju ni se to igbe yawo re ko yoro olorun pada that you have just become a graduate you have done your matriculation or whatever doesn't mean that the word of God has changed. That you are now an engineer, a doctor, doesn't change the word of God. That now you are a farmer that is, you know, saving money with cooperative bank, doesn't change the word of God. That you are riding car, even if you like riding an aeroplane or owning an aeroplane, that doesn't change the word of God. Whatever we have, whatever we don't have. Wherever we go and whatever we possess. In whatever situation you may be in life, the word of God remains unchanging. Look at Matthew chapter 24 and in verse 35 heaven and earth shall pass away. But my word shall never pass away. Friends, if heaven and earth will pass away, buildings and property will pass away, institutions will pass away, governments will pass away, posts and positions will pass away, enjoyment, entertainment will pass away. The customs and the standards of the world will pass away. Heaven and earth will pass away. Why then don't you just pitch your tent near the around the word of God? Why are we building our tents on the things that will pass away? Look at your life tonight. Whatever you have that makes you happy apart from salvation. That thing will pass away. Whatever you are enjoying apart from the grace of God, that thing will pass away. Whatever you are putting your confidence in apart from your relationship with God, that thing will pass away. You see many friends supporting you, exalting you. They will pass away. You see all the property around you that is for your convenience. All that will pass away. Our forefathers were sometimes in the world but now they have passed away all the things you have today you will not see them anymore in a few years but the word of God will never pass away that's why we came here this week so as to build on the unchanging word of God 
le ori oro ti olorun ti ko yipada the infallible word of god oro olorun ti ko yipada second timothy chapter 3 ni timothy ukeji ni ori iketa and in verse 16 ati ni ese ikerin bi logun all scripture is given by inspiration gogo iwe mimo ti o ni mi ti olorun all scripture is given by inspiration gogo iwe mimo ni a fi fun ni lati owo imi ti you see there are many people that reject one part of the word of God. It is that part of the word you reject that will make heaven to reject you. All scripture without exception is given by inspiration. And it says all scripture is profitable. You see when people hear about restitution. Oh they say that will not profit me if I go through that. When people hear about Christian dressing. Oh they say that will not be profitable to me if I practice it. When people hear about holiness in the Bible, oh, they say that will not be profitable for me. If they hear about humility, oh, that will not be profitable for me in my status, in my position. All scripture is profitable for the pilgrims who are going to heaven. Profitable for doctrine. You know there are churches today they don't want doctrine. All they want is fellowship. And there may be people here tonight oh, that, that say, Well, I came to deeper life not for doctrine, I only came for fellowship. You cannot bypass doctrine and get fellowship with God. If you reject the doctrine of the Bible, the word of God, there's no fellowship with God. And it says all scripture is profitable for reproof. That's where you lose a lot of people. They accept that you can preach, but you cannot rebuke them. You can encourage them. You can motivate them. You can make interesting messages to come across to them. But you cannot correct or reprove them. You know there are pastors. Immediately you bring any correction, any rebuke, they want to stop the ministry. Do you know there are people that call themselves church members? Immediately you bring the scripture that is profitable for reproof. They, would they say, well, we're going away, we cannot remain under that teaching. All such people are backsliding. You see, when you reject the word of God, you are rejecting God. All 
All scripture is profitable for doctrine. Profitable for reproof. Profitable for correction. Profitable for instruction in righteousness. There are people that don't want instruction for righteousness anymore. As I travel about, and some of the deeper life people want to see me, all they want now is, Pastor, pray for me, I want to be healed. They don't want instruction on restitution. They don't want instruction on their marriage. They don't want instruction on their work. They do not want instruction on training their children. They do not want instruction on how to live with friends and neighbors and brothers and sisters. All they want is prayer for healing, prayer for prosperity. But scripture is profitable for instruction in righteousness. That a man of God may be perfect thoroughly furnished unto all good work. Tonight, I challenge you that you will take the word of God. This word of God will never change. Denominations and churches may change. God will never change. Jesus remains the same and the word of God remains unchanging. Only those people that accept the unchanging word of God will eventually make heaven their home. And I believe the reason you have come here to this retreat is that you will hear the word of God. Is that why you have come? Are you sleeping? Is that why you have come? Are you willing to hear the word of God? I believe that for these few days we are together, we will be sharing the word of God together. And blessed are those people that will hear the word of God and do them. Before we pray, I want you to look at Luke chapter 11. Verse 28. But he said, Ye rather, blessed are they that hear the word of God and keep it. Blessed are those that hear the word of God and they keep the word of God. I pray that the grace to hear the word of God and keep to the word of God God will give to every one of us in Jesus' name. I want you to keep it in mind that even though the world is changing, the word of God will never change. And it will be good to stand on the word of God. Build on the word of God. And pray that God will give you an obedient heart to keep to the word of God every time. I want you to stand up now. I don't want you to sleep. There are sinners who are still in hotels and nightclubs at 11 o'clock, at 12 o'clock. They don't sleep in the nightclub. 
be ni awon elefe si pon wa ti won wa ninu ile ijo ati ni awon ile emu ka ti ri awon ke yesun lago mokan la le be ni won ki isun lago meji la oru if those who are serving the devil don't sleep why are you sleeping bi awon won ni ti won sin esu bi won ko ba sun ese si won fi wa sun don't sleep talk to the lord in prayer ma se sun o ba oluwa soro and tell the lord that all through this retreat period you will keep to the word of God. You will not diminish from the word of God. You will stand on the unchanging word of the Almighty God. God's word is unchanging. God's word is unchanging. Stand on that word. Is there any word of God you are trying to take away? Is there something you are adding to the word of God? Are you making yourself an equal with God? Are you making